Hi, this is Kevin Gong. This is part one of my video on King and Pawn versus King endings. So uh, the first thing I want to mention is um, <clears throat> with the uh, King and Queen versus King and the King and Rook versus King, uh, you don't really have to worry uh, about playing uh, the inferior side that well. Um, for example, uh, you know if White has a King and Queen and black has the king. If you're black, there's not really much you can do. Um, I mean, unless white hangs a piece or stalemates you, you can really just, you know, doesn't really matter where you move. Uh, now, this is completely different in king and pawn versus king endings. Uh, you have uh, a good chance to, to try to draw uh, the game, even though you're behind by a pawn. Um, but it really depends on you playing well. Um, you can't just, you know, make random moves and hope to draw. So that's just the first thing I want to mention. Um, so let's just start uh, with a simple king and pawn versus king ending. Uh, here white has a single pawn here at the uh, f5 square. And the first thing you'll notice is that the king, the white king, is too far away to help um, the, uh, the pawn reach the 8th rank. So the idea is simply... If you're white, you want to get a queen, um, and then and then checkmate uh, the black king after you get a queen. So the black king is here at b6, and it's closer to the white pawn. And the, and the question you need to ask is, well, is it close enough to stop it? Um, a simple way to determine that is uh, something called the square of the pawn. So if the pawn is here at f5, the queening square, the square that's trying to get to, is f8. So you just count those squares, 1, 2, 3, 4, and you draw a 4 by 4 square uh, starting with that pawn. So the square would be from f5 to 1, 2, 3, 4, c5. So f5 to c5 to c8 to f8. So that's the square of the pawn. Now, if the black king can enter the square of the pawn, then it's close enough to stop it. So in this case, if it's black's move, it'll move into the square. <clears throat> it, it doesn't actually matter if it moves to c5, c6, or c7. Those are all fine. It'll still be in the square of the pawn. Uh, white's king, again, is too far away to help. Uh, it can only just... Uh, move the pawn forward and hope that black can't catch it, but in this case it will. Again, the square of the pawn here is um, it's 3 by 3 because uh, you count the squares including the pawn, uh, f6, f7, f8, that's three squares, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3. So as long as uh, black moves to d6 or d7, it's inside the square of the pawn. Okay, again, white moves up. And here, now the square of the pawn is 2 by 2, uh, this 2 by 2 square here. So black has to move to e7. Any other square, and of course, um, white will just queen on the next move, and uh, black would lose. So black has to move to e7, and then there's nothing white can do. White can get a queen, but immediately lose it, and it's a draw. Okay? So, uh, you know, if, if you're in a game, uh, going back to this position, you could just kind of count. Uh, but if you're playing fast and, uh, you know, against the clock and uh, you want to calculate this quickly, you can just think of the square of the pawn. And that'll tell you if um, you'll win the race or not. Okay, so that was one position. Let's take a look at another position here where uh, the uh, white pawn is at g4, so the square of the pawn is 5 by 5, so 5 squares, 5 squares this way. So that's the square of the pawn, and clearly black's king cannot enter the square. The best you can do is uh, get next to the square of the pawn. So as soon as you see that, you should know that uh, the black king is never going to catch the white pawn. It'll all be always be one step too late. Okay, so white gets the queen, and uh, white will win. Okay, so let's look at a more complicated case. 
So here, uh, the square of the pawn at h4 is, again, it's a 5 by 5 square. So you draw it out to d4, d4 to d8 to h8. And black can enter the square of the pawn. So if white's king weren't here, it would be able to catch, uh, white, uh, black would be able to catch the white pawn. But in this case, uh, white's king is close enough that it can help. And that makes a big difference. So white can just move down and try to prevent the black king from reaching this h8 square, which is where we want our, uh, our white pawn to go to. Okay. So if he moves to e8, we, we don't want to let him slide over here. So we'll move down to um, g7. And now uh, the black king can't get across here to h8. And it'll take too long to go around. Uh, to uh, h5, so white will win. Okay, and there's nothing black can do to, to stop this pawn from uh, becoming a queen. Okay, so uh, you can think of king and pawn versus king endings as uh, there being three different types. Uh, the first type was where the uh, the black king can get inside the square of the pawn and the white king is too far away to help, in which case it'll be a draw. Second case uh, was where the black king is simply too far away, it's outside of the square of the pawn and white will win. And then the third case is where the black king can get inside the square of the pawn but the white king is close enough to assist. And um, that's where we'll be spending uh, most of our time in uh, the different parts of uh, this video. Uh, in this first part, I just showed you uh, one example. Um, let me show you a slightly different case. I'll just look at the same position, actually, and show you some of the uh, subtleties of this. Um, so let's, you know, black, black goes here again. Let's suppose that instead of white, uh, king moving to uh, f6 and preventing the black king from getting down here, uh, that it moves the pawn up. Okay, and uh, I won't go into a great deal of, of detail, but that move actually prevents white from winning right away. Immediately, uh, white can no longer win. Um, well, cannot force a win. Um, so let's let's keep going. Let's suppose black sees this and says, oh, I want to get over there. And white suddenly decides, oh, well, I don't want to let him uh, get over there. So I'll move my king now. Um, but it's too late. Uh, even if white brings the king down into the corner, um, we'll, we'll see later that uh, um, white can't win this anyway. I'll just show you uh, one possible sequence of moves here. Um, and here, if uh, black simply moves down here, that's actually stalemate. Uh, so that's kind of neat. Uh, even though black doesn't have any pieces, it can still stalemate uh, white, and that's a draw. So um, just going back to that position, uh, if you're white, you have to be very careful. Um, you know, if uh, you see black moving toward your pawn, you have to think about what you want to do. Um, and in general, it's usually better to move your king uh, than your pawns, um, but you know, you know that's just kind of a general rule. There, there are certain cases where uh, moving the pawn is better, uh, but uh, you know if you can get your king out in front of the opposing king, that's usually better. So that's it for part one of this video. Uh, in the uh, remaining parts, we'll be going over some more complicated positions. Thanks for watching.